Hello, welcome to this uh, third part of the series. So, in this series, uh, in this video, I will be explaining this problem. So, let us see what is the problem is saying. So, the problem is saying that in a lossless medium, so the first information is giving what? In a lossless medium, eta value is given as 60 pi, mu r or the relative permea uh, permeability is given as 1 and the edge field is given, expression for the edge field is given and uh, you can see this is a combination of two components here okay? and calculate it has asked to calculate the epsilon r or the relative permittivity omega and the E value or the E field value it has asked to find. Okay? So, how to do that? So, first of all uh, let us see uh, from the question what data we are getting. So, first we are getting that it is a lossless medium. Okay? So, when it is a lossless medium, so what is there? So, we know in a lossless medium the sigma is equals to 0, conductivity is 0 and for lossless medium alpha is also equals to 0 that is the attenuation constant and beta is equals to 1. So, how I am knowing beta is equals to 1? So, see here omega t minus z is written. So, we can compare this with omega t minus beta z. If we compare with this form then we will get beta value is equals to 1. Okay? Now, any other thing is given eta is equals to 60 pi. So, these are the information given in the question as well as mu r is equals to 1. Okay. So, first question is to find the epsilon r. So, to find the epsilon r. So, how do we find that? So, before finding epsilon r, so we know that your eta is equals to what square root of mu by epsilon. Okay. So, what is this mu and epsilon? How to uh, uh, use this in the formula? So, mu is nothing but mu naught into mu r divided by epsilon naught into epsilon r. So, epsilon is represented as epsilon naught into epsilon r and mu is represented as mu naught into epsilon mu r and its square root. So, that I can write mu naught divided by epsilon naught square root into square root of mu r divided by epsilon. I am just uh, doing some simplification here. Okay. Now, that implies how much? So, mu naught by epsilon naught root over. So, what is this? This is nothing but eta naught that is the instruction impedance of a, of a medium in free space. right? So, what is this value? This value is basically 377 ohm or else we can write 120 pi. So, why we are writing 120 pi? Because it will be easy in calculation into mu r. So, mu r in question is given as 1. So, 1 divided by square root of epsilon r. Okay? So, now once that is given, so that is equals to how much? That is equals to eta. So, we can write that is equals to eta value is given as 60 pi. So, pi pi gets cancelled and here it is 2. So, your square root of omega epsilon r is equals to 2 that implies your epsilon r is equals to so, this is the answer to the first question what is the value of epsilon r. Okay. So, next question is to find the omega the frequency. So, how to find the frequency? So, we know another formula. Okay, let me go to next page. So, we know that one formula beta is equals to omega into root over of mu epsilon. So, this we know. So, that implies it is equals to omega into so mu and epsilon can be represent mu naught into epsilon naught so i am directly writing the simplified value mu r into epsilon r okay now mu naught into epsilon naught so we know the speed of light is equals to 1 by square root of mu naught epsilon naught so here if it is written it can be written as omega divided by c okay omega divided by c into mu r is 1 and epsilon r is how much 2 okay so it will be 2 here right so that is equals to 2 omega by c so simply i can write 2 omega by c so now what is the value of omega that is omega equals to beta into c divided by 2 so this will be value of your omega so that is equals to how much beta value is given in the question 1 c value is 3 into 10 to the power 8 okay that is the speed of light divided by 2. So, omega is equals to how much? 1.5 into 10 power 8 radians per second. So, that is the unit we need to write. 
next question is to find the e field ok so how to find the e field now here in the question there is two components of the h field is there right so let me just write the h field first then we will see how to find that so here h is given how much h is given as minus 0 0.1 cos of omega t minus z a x plus 0 0.5 sin of omega t minus z a y amperes per meter that is was the your h field is given now here there are two parts in this question uh, two components of the h this is one component and this is the second component ok so i will write h1 or the first component is equals to the first one so right i can write h1 is equals to minus 0 0.1 cos of omega t minus z ax ok and i can write h2 that is the second component is 0 0.5 sin of omega t minus z ay ok so uh, now we have to find e1 ok and we have to find e2 as well and combining that i will get we will get the what is the e here so e is the question so that is equals to e1 plus e2 once we find that we can write like this ok so to find that what is the expression of e1 i can write e1 is equals to what e1 not that means amplitude of e1 not cos of simple omega t minus beta beta z ok and angle oh sorry angle components or the direction of e1 similarly your e2 is equals to e2 naught into cos of omega t minus beta z a e2 so what we need to find we need to find what is the e1 naught value what is a e or what is the direction and as well as beta so beta is already given in the question that is 1 so we can directly use 1 here now let us find uh, 1 by 1 so first we will find what is e1 then we will find what is e2 so for e1 how we can find your a we are going to find e1 ok so a e1 first we need to find that is equals to what minus of a k into a h1 means direction of propagation into h1 direction so that is equals to minus of a z a z is the direction the, the given of the wave the omega t minus beta z so a z into a h of the one what is a x right so a x and here you can see minus sign is there that is why the direction is in minus a x so it will be a z in cross minus a x ok and that will be your a y so finally it will give you the value of a y so i have given that uh, clockwise and counter clockwise notation in the previous problem you can refer to that how i am writing this ok now what is the value of e i 0 so e i 0 is equals to eta into h 1 0 h 1 0 value is 0 0.1 so it is 60 pi that is the value given in the question into 0 0.1 so that is simply 6 pi now what will be e1 so e1 i can write 6 pi into cos of omega t minus beta z beta is given one so simply z and the direction is ay ok so this is important the direction you need to find simply for e2 also we can do the same thing so if i see for e2 then your e a e2 will come as how much a e2 will be your a x ok y a x see here what is the direction of uh, this one is a y so it will be a x ok and what will be e2 magnitude so e2 magnitude is equals to how much so h i know h2 naught is 0 0.5 or 1.2 so that is equals to 60 pi into 1 by 2 right so that will come as 30 pi now e2 expression will be so that is equals to 30 pi into sin of omega t minus z ax so why sin of i am writing instead of cos 
since the cosine also second term is sine so that's why i'm writing sine here okay and ax is the direction so finally what is e so finally the e can be written as 6 pi into cos of omega t minus z a y plus 30 pi sin of omega t minus z a x ok. So, this is the final answer here. So, this one is the easiest method you can follow and uh, this much from this video and in the next video I will explain another problem. So, till then study this and come to see the next video. Thank you.